exhibit that we're in right now called Made in Maine is all about 19th century and early 20th century work. We will learn what people in Maine's life was like through the work they did and the products they created. Work was being done in kitchens, sewing rooms, shops, and especially mills and factories. Today we are going to take a closer look at some of those mill and factory settings, most of which were powered by water. The power source is what makes a machine run. Today, most machines use electricity, but some use foot power or solar power, or maybe your favorite machine is wind powered. But water power has been uh, very important to Maine's identity uh, just right after Maine became a state, uh, right up to the present day. Maine has a lot of rivers and streams. Because of this, early mills in Maine like cotton, woolen, and sawmills took advantage of this to power machinery. Water can be harnessed in a couple of different ways, all using belts and pulleys. You might have seen a picture of a water wheel with paddles. The mill behind me uses a water turbine with paddles. Whether you are using a water wheel or a turbine, it's the weight of water that pushes the paddles, turning the belts and pulleys, creating a power source for the saws in this mill. The sawmill behind me is from Warren, Maine, built in 1764, and is an excellent example of how Mainers use water as a power source. Now we're in front of the carding mill, uh, which was a mill that was developed for processing wool. Dave, can you tell us a little bit more about what that process would be like and what it would be like um, using some of these machines? Sure. Well, these mill, uh, this is a woolen mill, and the big red machines that you see in the back are called carding machines. Wool has to be carded or brushed to make the fibers line up so it's more easily spun into yarn. And instead of doing this by hand, now because of water power, these carding machines back here can do that same process. Dave, thank you for showing us around um, and explaining how these machines work. It sounds like water power allows people to card and spin a lot more wool into yarn and a lot faster than if they were to do all of this work by hand. Right now, we are in a weave shed. A weave shed is at the bottom level of a woolen factory, woolen products factory. And what's going on here is that we have water-powered looms that are packed tightly together that are moving very quickly to create 
um, uh, wool fabric that could be used for a variety of products, clothing, uh, blankets, things like that. This is a pretty dangerous place to work. There's a lot of hazards here. Again, there's a lot of moving equipment that's going fast, a lot of people packed in here, a lot of machines packed in here. Um, it's loud and it's also got a lot of flammable material. Uh, this is a, a loom and a weave shed like this would have a lot of looms in a very small area sometimes. Cotton mills could have a lot of them, maybe a hundred of them at one, one time. And this particular loom was used by the Knox Woolen Mill in Camden. And after the thread has been spun in the kiting and spinning room, bring it down here, put on a bob and a spool. The bob and a spool is then put in this thing called a shuttle. And it has to go back and forth to weave the cloth in place. In 1820, the kitchen was usually the warmest and busiest room in the house. The home spinning jenny, a vertical spinner, produced more yarn daily than a spinning wheel. The Thomas Rod Company on Exchange Street in Bangor manufactured and repaired bamboo fishing rods during the first half of the 20th century. Bamboo from China was used because it was durable and strong. There were mass produced parts used on each fishing rod, but each rod was individually made for each customer. John Hall of Portland was an important gunsmith during the early part of the 19th century. He was instrumental in the innovation of interchangeable parts in his gun making operation which was the basis of mass production. Nineteenth century blacksmiths were very creative artisans. The forge and bellows were used to heat metal while the anvil and swage block helped shape it. The metal strips added to the plow mold board provided added strength for use in means hard and rocky soil and demonstrate the scope of work a blacksmith would encounter. We are now near the end of our journey walking through the Navy exhibit. We are in this space called Cars and Boats. It is one of our favorite areas of the museum for our 
visitors and it features all sorts of transportation. We have sleds and buggies and cars, early uh, vehicles that people would use to get where they needed to go in Maine. This is a velocipede or bicycle from about the year 1866. Unlike your bicycles today, it doesn't have any rubber tires, no chain, no brakes, and it weighs about 60 pounds. Gives you a really rough ride, so you guessed it, they called it a bone shaker. Thank you guys for joining us on our virtual scavenger hunt. And we're going to be coming back and explore the 12,000 Years of Meaning exhibit. So we'll see you soon.